Meanwhile, let's talk courts, bad and good. Today, the Fulton County judge is set to hear closing arguments in the misconduct case against District Attorney Fonnie Willis. The ruling will have a far-reaching impact whether Willis and her entire staff, including Nathan Wade, should be disqualified from prosecuting Georgia's 2020 election interference case against former President Trump. Here are the reaction. The hard facts. Former federal prosecutor Francie Hakes. Francie, this is up to the judge to decide if she goes forward. And now we have text messages between Ashley Merton the lawyer for Roman, and the business partner of Nathan Wade that shows that he said the relationship started in 2019, which shows he gave her boyfriend the job he wasn't qualified for. That should disqualify them, don't you think? Well, it really should, Brian. You know, it's really odd in this case that she thought it was going to be fine and that no one would notice that she was hiring her boyfriend. I think that's part of the reason that it seems like they were sneaking around at weird hours of the night, which is what that cell phone data is going to reveal. The initial question about disqualifying her, though, Brian, was all about the money that he was spending on her. Now, because of their actions in court, because of their testimony in hearings and Terrence Bradley's testimony and some other testimony, they're in much more trouble for possible perjury yes. and fraud on the court. It's amazing uh, to think they're going to do something unprecedented, like have a state case go against a former president that could be a future president. With these two, cir uh, this circus going on is insane. What does it do for the case and the timing? If they're out, well, what does it, it do? Well, it really hurts the case. It, it hurts the timing. What's going to happen, though, I think everything's going to get delayed. I doubt that Judge McAfee is going to rule today from the bench on all the issues that are outstanding around disqualification. He's going to want to listen to the evidence. He's going to want to hear the arguments. And he's probably going to admit those cell records with that geolocation data that shows Nathan Wade was visiting Willis in spite of what they said uh, on mm -hmm. the stand earlier. So I think that there will be some delay. After that, there are more motions to get through in this case. This case is far from ready for trial. And I agree with you. It's insane to me that a public official, an elected official who ran on an right. anti-corruption platform. I know. Didn't pay joke. any attention She's to what she was doing herself. She has totally exposed herself as incompetent and uh, unethical, and she's a liar. Uh, and I think that'll be proven today. Now let's talk about Hunter Biden. And what did you get from the 200 pages? I got that he has admitted to his dad getting involved 20 separate times, whether speakerphone or actually in-person appearances in part of his business deal. But he says his dad had nothing to do with it. He also said when pressed on text messages, it's in one of which said, my dad is sitting next to me. We're not happy and we don't forget. We're going to hold a grudge. Well, I was drunk and high at the time when I wrote that text message. Drunk and high? And addicted and, and childhood trauma led him to do these things. Your thoughts about what it means? Poor, pitiful Hunter. You know, Brian, as a prosecutor, what I look at is what could I prove to a jury here, given all the facts that we know? And first, what I know is that the opening arguments, if you will, from the Biden administration was always he had nothing to do with it. He didn't meet any of these people. He never spoke to any of these people. And what happened yesterday in, in Congress was that Hunter Biden confirmed that his dad did, in fact, call in to business meetings and met these business associates. What grown man has his dad calling in during multi-million dollar business deals and puts him on speakerphone? There's only one reason to do it, and it's not because you love your dad or because you're a drug addict. It's because you're showing off, you're showing access to your father, who's the vice president of the United States, and that is the brand. It's the Biden brand, and that's what Hunter was selling, and I think that's what, what was confirmed yesterday in his testimony. When Rob Goar said uh, the big guy was uh, Joe Biden, Tony Bobulinski said the same thing. He said he had no business saying that. He doesn't have any idea where that came from. We don't call our dad the big guy. So th that's going to be it. I, was dr I had tried tragedy, which is true. I had a massive addictions, which is true. But those text messages were written with perfect punctuation and delivered better than I am. And I'm not on drugs, as far as I know. And I'm not drunk, as far as I know. Uh, and usually people who have those, both those problems don't put text messages together like that. We'll see what it means for the big case, because now they want him to, uh, they want him to testify uh, in front of everybody. Thanks, Francie. You appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.